Well, hello, welcome to FC Cymru, and you join us at the Cage. There could not be a more fitting name for this ground. It's the home of STM Sports, and today they are in Nathaniel MG semi-final cup action against Aberystwyth Town. STM Sports were like a pub team about nine years ago. First time they've entered this competition, and this is the biggest game in their history so far today. Also in the programme today, Wales have got a new kit. You may have seen it. They look resplendent when they qualified for the Euros, and it with a win over Hungary, but whose job is it to lay all that out and make sure all the players have got everything that they need to actually go and do the job of being a Wales player? Well, we'll find out later on in the programme. More than a club time as well in this edition, but first, if you like football, but you're a bit too middle class, and maybe you just like it to be warm and dry and preferably indoors, well then futsal is the sport for you. Wales have been going for a few years now. They're trying to qualify for the European Championships and we sent Lawrence along to find out more. My name's Chris Foot, uh, and I'm here to deliver an uh, introduction to futsal course on behalf of the coach education department. So for the uninitiated, Chris, yes. futsal isn't just five-side indoors, is it? I think anybody who comes along and sees futsal in, in person or gets involved in it will see the differences. Uh, it's FIFA's approved version of the, of the small-sided game. There's a World Cup, there's European Championships, there's a Champions League, and the level of technical ability and tactical uh, variations is astounding really. And so last night when the game was on and, and we had Wales playing and the, the national anthem going, it, it must be a great buzz for those players going representing their country. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the, the programme in Wales uh, for the international team is, is less than 10 years old, uh, but some of those players now are rapidly approaching their 50th cap uh, and you know, in fairness to them, they're all sort of converted footballers in the main, um, but you know they're going out of their way to, to actually represent their country alongside uh, full-time jobs, studies, family commitments, uh, and the level of professional uh, professionalism within the team and the backroom staff is, it, you know, is something that I've been really uh, amazed by and, and proud to have been involved in the last last year. So apparently you can play indoor football for Wales then. Well, futsal is not like any other indoor football. This is the uh, the ball they've given me. So it's around about a size four. Uh, it's a lot more solid than a normal football. It doesn't bounce so much. So you've got a chance to do lots of skills, which I'm going to be taught on this coach education course this morning. But I'll tell you what, why don't we listen to the experts and they'll tell us exactly why futsal is so amazing. Futsal is it's enjoyable. You get lots of touches of the ball. It's a lot more technical, a um, lot more tactical. Um, that's what I enjoy about it, really. For me, I love futsal just because it's so fast-paced. You could be attacking once, going for goal, and the next minute you've got to chase their counter-attack. So it's just so fast-paced. And like that's a bit of me. Like I just love a fast-paced game. And it's very entertaining for everyone who's coming to watch. And yeah, just love it. Lots of people will come in uh, to the sport, maybe a, you know, as a, as a trialist, and they and they won't know a great deal about futsal. And you know, obviously, it's not necessarily in the, the consciousness of the British public that, that often. So we have to explain that sort of the different rules, what's demanded of them as players, and uh, you know, the, the the physicality of it. I kept wanting to control the ball with my instep. Yeah, I, I'm kind of not getting how, how are you getting on. Uh, same as you, really. Like, I'm really struggling with the, the basics because everything's you know. The wrong way around, you know. We yeah. kind of the things we're not supposed to do, we now got to do, and technique is just totally at the window. So, uh, yeah, it's, dif it's different, and it? it's very different. We've seen the controlling with the sole of the foot. What, why is that? It's to do with speed and control, so that you've got the ball under your foot and you can move it and manipulate it as quickly as possible, rather than going through mechanics of passing. So you can receive the ball and move the ball on as quick as possible. So we would have seen maybe some of the Wales internationals last night. They would have been doing that uh, because they want to create space and they haven't got time to be able to it's control the time, the technical te time and space management, control, decision making, it's all bringing it out a lot quicker. 
There we go then, fast, furious. I've absolutely loved my morning playing futsal. Uh, loads of new techniques for aging footballers like me to pick up. Um, we'll put the details of where you can find your local futsal club in our new FC Cymru group on Facebook. Uh, details will be on the bottom of the screen right there. There we go. Uh, and, uh, and, and you can go and look up your local team there. But uh, now let's finish with the people who can do it properly. It's incredible. It really is incredible. You get a huge fan base, so it's a really good turnout today. Fans get escorted to the game, and it's really, really exciting. Great atmosphere. Unbelievable. It's such an honour for me. But I don't know if you caught me, my face when I scored tonight. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's what, what you feel, what you think it would be. Playing for Wales, like, it's, it's, it's an honour for me, and it's, I think like this is the top standard that I'll ever play. So it's to put on a Welsh shirt is it's always been a dream of mine and to do it in a futsal court is <laughs> brilliant. We are getting ready for kickoff then in this Nathaniel MG Cup semi-final tie. Now Nigel is the secretary of STM Sports. Thank you for joining us, uh, Nigel. Take me, take me on a journey. Take me through STM Sports. Well, it's been a, a, a quite a short journey, really. Um, it's it's whatever it is, 12, 13 years or so. Started in the very bottom of the Cardiff Combination Football League in Cardiff. Um, worked our way through. Had virtually promotions most years. Um, fought our way into the Welsh League in the first place because our initial application was rejected. We won the appeal. We played a playoff at the Cardiff City Stadium. That got us into the Welsh League. Having got in there, we were not promoted in the first season, but certainly in the second season, and then got ourselves up and won the league last year to get ourselves into the Cymru South. This is your first time in this competition. It is. Not done too badly. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's been great. It's been quite an experience and we've had some pretty memorable uh, wins so far, uh, having beaten Harvey West um, on penalties. And then moving on to that, we beat Newtown up there, which was uh, quite an achievement. Quite an achievement. And chances today then, Nigel, what are you feeling? What's well, in your bones? Difficult. Very difficult. They're a very good side. Um, they're a very good side and uh, uh, I probably should say it after the game rather than before, but we do have two or three key players that aren't available today. Um, Don't get it in early, no, it's a good job, yeah, to get it in early, yeah, missing so many key players. We'll do our best, we've got a big squad. The players that have come in are good and equally as good, so it's their chance. So, you know, we'll just do our best, as we always do. When I look around the place, it feels like a part of the community, so you must be really proud of that. Yes, yes. It's, uh, we are pretty fortunate in the fact that we've been basically handed this club out. So with that, we'd like to obviously share it with everybody we can. The school took over the old pitch. We've benefited, and I think it's really fair, I think, for us to share and put that out to the community. I, I think it's vital to keep the community involved. Uh, ultimately, we, we rely on the community to support us from a social point of view as well as playing football and I think the more events that we can put on at the club and be inclusive to everybody, it pays off and reaps dividends hopefully on the football side going forward as well. We thought we'd come to the bar just to relax, have a cup of tea, catch up with the ladies that do the leg club. Right, first of all, what is a leg club? So the leg club started in January 2017. We bring lots of people together from the community um, to enhance their well-being and to also reduce social isolation and maintain healthy legs. Then. We have five sessions on a Thursday from 9 till 12.30 and we have up to nearly 400 members. That's a lot of people. That is a lot of legs. And everybody likes coming here because they can have the social aspect and have a cup of tea and biscuits and, and yeah, and it saves us and the GPs a lot of money going out to the houses and we can do it all here and we see anybody from, from Powys. My son, Stefan, is autistic 
and he'd been asking me for a few years if he could play football for Come Wanderers Mainstream. So I thought, well, what can I do to, to help him gain an interest in football, play football and help other children in the area to develop their football skills and socialising skills. And that's why I started the academy here at Come Wanderers AFC. Did you expect it to grow in the way it has grown? Uh, no, I'll be honest, I didn't. <laughs> um, two years ago we started with three players and quickly it grew to 30 children due to the demand on the service that we provide and we currently have a waiting list of about 70 children that want to that want to join the club. So wow. it has really skyrocketed since the start. Coming to the academy, it gave me a chance and to get away from um, the uh, nagging stress it is and just be myself and have some fun. It made me feel more responsible because I'm one of the oldest members of the academy and I like having that sense of responsibility. So people with autism come to the club to socialise and play football and learn new skills and I help with that to try like get my skills to pay off with them. So some are like they wouldn't listen at all but now they're like learning to listen because of the academy. So Let's try have fun with them. It's about getting the children out of their rooms together, forming friendships and also inclusion for the club. So working with mainstream children and academy children and bringing them all together as well. What makes you most proud of this club? It's just how, how close-knit uh, the, the committee, um, that the guys really who are the volunteers, heart and soul of the club how close we work together, um, the commitment that everybody puts in, because if we didn't have that, it just doesn't happen. It's not just about the academy, it's not just about the football, it's not just about the leg club, it's about this club being an absolute community club for everybody, where the whole focus is all on inclusion. So we've got boys, girls, um, academy players, senior players, it's everybody in the community coming together and when you think about this club, every single person that operates this club does it on a volunteering basis, there is no paid staff member here, so having that many people wanting to do something and give back and be part of this club is really inspirational. Into the second half then of this Nathaniel MG Cup semi-final, then I have a uh, an ABBA and an STM fan with me. Tom, one is even in the uh, in the game at the moment. It's one all. Your uh, thoughts on the game so far? Uh, to bring out all the cliches, it's been very end to end. But I think we've topped it. We've made them more chances, and it's just about making them pay now. Really, um, STM have turned up. They've decent side. To be fair, they've given us a good challenge. Then, oh no! Get in there. <laughs> oh, no. In the lead, how's that? Instant reaction. Uh, amazing. If I'm being honest, if I have to disagree with what he said there. Um, <laughs> I don't know what game he's watching, if I'm being honest. This, we've had two clear-cut chances, uh, which probably would have put the game 2-1. Uh, now it is 2-1, and I think we'll go on now. Uh, but I think we we'll finish 3-2 STM. Oh, yeah, it's a bold prediction then. Uh, Tom, you are now behind in this game. Thoughts, feelings? Uh, we'll pull it back. We always do. Yeah. yeah, we'll be fine. OK, confident, confident stuff. Right, these boys need to go and watch uh, the rest of this game, then, as do you. But before we do that, it is uh, time to go and find out who is responsible for making sure, when you see all the kit laid out in the world's dressing room, it's all absolutely beautiful and it's all absolutely lovely and just so... Uh, whose job is that? So this is a bit of a secret cave, isn't it? Nobody really knows where we are right now. I was blindfolded on the way in, believe it or not. <laughs> Nobody really knows where we are. 
Well, I'm glad you weren't driving then, because otherwise we would have had a nasty accident. But yeah, no one knows where we are. Outside our building is all completely, like, it's, it's, it's not branded up or anything, so nobody knows what's inside the building. And then when you come through the doors, you're in Aladdin's cave, as we call it, because I think every time someone comes in, it's kind of like, wow, wow. I think people are really surprised by how much stock we've actually got. question on everyone's lips. Is Gareth Bale an aerial three-in-one or a fairy non-bio kind of guy? I'd say he's more a Daz kind of guy. Okay. Just purely to get up those whites of Real Madrid. Well, it's understandable, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Are there any superstitions in the squad? Anyone have any particular way of doing things before a game? Um, yeah, I mean, Chris Gunter, Guns, before a game he always uh, calls me over. We have this little routine going on. Um, where he straps his wrist with um, some white tape, then we get a roll of red tape. So then Chris holds it like so, I hold it like so, and we slice it lengthways with the scissors. I then have to hold it on my finger while he wraps the one half of the length around the white tape. And then that's Chris, Chris done then, really. That's definitely one that happens before every game. And you did that before the Belgium game? We've been doing that for quite a long time now, yeah, but definitely would have done that before the Belgium game. I'll be buying you some red tape before you go <laughs> off to Baku, believe me. Yeah, trust me, I always, like, that is always one specific tape that's in my stud box. And it's just in its own little drawer, ready for Chris, because I need, I mean, basically need to make sure that it never goes missing. you are going to tape. I love it. I love it. You've got three of you working here now, but it's not always been that that way, has it? You know, when you've had to prepare things on your own, maybe get an ice baths for players. It's not always been as simple. No, it's not. It's not always been as simple. As I said I've been here 20 years. Um, certainly in the first 10 years, football wasn't where it is now in terms of sports science. Everything's got more and more professional. And as you mentioned, yes, we have proper proper ice baths now, um, which we'll be taking to Baku and Rome with us. I remember, I do remember near 10, maybe 11 years ago when we probably one of the very first times we went to Baku. Ice baths weren't readily available as they are now and we had to take a Winnie the Pooh paddling pool with us. <laughs> An image I still have is big John, John Arson sat in it, um, recovering. I'm pretty sure that we'll be, we'll be using proper ice baths this time around. And getting on to that, Baku, Baku, Rome. In that order? In that order, In that order. Um, yes, absolutely. We have, this is obviously from 2016. Yep. How excited are you to see the badges on the shirt for 2020? It's outstanding. Such a great, great feeling. I think everybody is just looking forward to it now. Logistically, it's gonna be different, but I can't wait to get going. This is obviously a fantastic job, and since I've been in here, I've, I've just been in awe of the, of the whole thing. What do you get most satisfaction from with this job? I, th I think it's just genuinely, when we're in as a team, that's the great satisfaction, because that's what you want. You want, you want to be in that football environment, you want to be on the grass, you want to be in the hotels, you want to, you want to have that team bond and team spirit, and, and, and that's what I get my satisfaction from, just just enjoying what we do. We are a small association and everybody pulls in the same direction. The motto sums up everything that we do really. We are we are in it together. We are we are stronger when we're together and everybody are just pushing for success.
final score in the Nathaniel MG Cup semi-final. It was STM Sports 2, Aberystwyth Town 1. I'm joined by Nana and Gazer, two very happy boys from uh, STM. There's a huge smile there, <laughs> Nana. Oh, mate, it's, it's, it, it was stressful. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky I didn't have a stroke then. Um, oh, I'm, I'm over. I'm, oh, I don't even know what to say. I'm, I'm just absolutely chuffed. You know, I'm, I'm so happy for the, the likes of Nigel and the club um, and the players. The work they put in today is just unbelievable. You know, opportunity to get into any final is is, is special, and to get to the final of this, oh, I'm just I'm lost for words. I'm yeah. really lost for words. Now, first time I've asked you as well. And Gazer, you, you 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 felt it was comfortable. Felt you deserved that one. I think we did deserve it, yeah. I mean, we rode our luck at times, but listen, they're fighters. You don't get promoted 10 times in 14 years by learning how to lose. It was tough, but I just thought the boys implemented what Nana and Dale said, the management team, and we carried it out to a tee. And we deserved it. Why, why, why shouldn't we dare to believe? You know, we, we deserved it. We, we, we've beaten Newtown on their own patch. I, I told them when they come down here the other week in the cage, it's a different atmosphere. 200, 300 people from St. Mellon's come out all the way through. Um, fantastic day for the club. Hopefully we've put ourselves on, um, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a shop window really, because, I mean, our, our biggest problem is we don't have funding. You know, the only funding we get is from the likes of Gazer and Nigel. And all we do, you know, is, is just play. And all we want as a club is for someone to take a bit of belief in us, invest in us, help us to build this um, area up, help us to build, you know, academies and help the youngsters around the community to do well. You know, so for us to get to the final, that's the message we want to send out. You know, we are doing our part. Now, can you guys here, out there, who have a bit of money, come and help us and help us raise the community? Congratulations to uh, STM Sport boys. Absolutely best of luck for the uh, rest of the season and uh, good luck at that final. That then uh, brings it to, to an end. Uh, this edition of FC Cymru. Thank you so much for uh, watching. If you want to comment on what you've seen uh, and uh, on just anything really Welsh football-wise, then there is the uh, FC Cymru Facebook group details across the bottom of the screen as I speak. But from me at the cage, ta-da!